different approach with my camera and my phone and my microphone uh, right here from my chair instead of the studios. And uh, I want to say thank you uh, to Billy from uh, Kentucky for helping us today on Apple Pay. Thank you for Marilyn today for $10. Came in the mail today, Marilyn. I got that check and I've been praying over it today, believing God for people's increase. I'm believing for Jeffrey, brother Jeffrey in uh, Kentucky. Also, boy, Kentucky just comes through for us all the time. Thank God for Kentucky. And then Terry, Sister Terry, thank you for helping me with your pledge, your online pre pledge today from Michigan. I really, really appreciate that. And I am praying over these checks all day today. They go in my pocketbook. And I pray through them in the spirit all day long. So when your offering comes, and if it comes online, I take a moment to uh, print it out and I put it in my pocketbook as well and uh, pray over that as well. So don't think that just because you, you know, that you have to send a check. If you do it on Cash App, if you do it on uh, any other way, uh, then uh, we'll help you. Maybe you can close that door, Julie. You can close that door for me. I'm, I'm on here live. We got children here. That's the problem with that not being in my studio. But I figured you could handle it. This is my chair of my living room, and I like to sit here and pray. I have my Bibles and books, and Angela thinks she's keeping it all cleaned up for me when actually she's, uh, she's putting it all in disarray for me. So I tell her, "Don't touch my books. I'm praying and asking God for a word." Today, the flow of the prophetic was just amazing. And somebody said, "Where? what church was it? Well, right here in my living room. I um, I was going through my messenger list, and uh, as I did, praying in the Spirit, just one after another, the prophetic word of the Lord just started coming to me. I started seeing pictures, started seeing video like I do in a service, you know. And so I just started typing and talking as fast as I could. And um, I really know God has a word for you, but you got to send me, you got to send me something. You got to say, Brother Woods, what is the Lord saying about me? And some of you'd never say that. I don't understand. Maybe you're afraid to ask that. But when I take your name before the Lord, he's going to talk to me. So I get really great joy when somebody asks me, what's the Lord saying about me? Um, that that really does something to me because it's it's the gifting within me. And so that's important to me. I was a, I wanted to give you this uh, these notes that I have in my Bible, and I've been carrying them around a long time. And I talked a little bit this afternoon from the book of Amos. I think there's seven or eight chapters in the book of Amos, but we went through it really quickly, probably like in 45 minutes. I don't think it recorded. I think if you watched it live, you got it live. If you have to look back on the recording, you won't. Uh, but I want to talk to you about, and I wasn't going to talk about this because I think some people in my mind, I think that some people get tired of me dealing with the area of finance and some people do. But when I take it to the Lord, the Lord gets on my case and he says to me, I'm calling you to break the bondages off of people concerning poverty. Called you to break the bondages off of people concerning uh, sickness and disease. And so I can't listen to the people. I can't listen to them. I got to listen to God. And if God says to preach prosperity to you and break the bondages off of your finances, I'm going to obey God. Uh, Book of Acts, the disciples, the apostles said, it's better to obey God rather than man. And so I got to keep that in mind because um, regardless of what a few select people think, God has a word for you concerning freedom financially. I mean, I don't think it's normal. I don't think it's normal for you to run around and think that God wants you just to have just enough or barely enough or, or not enough. Even worse yet, there are some people I've met, they believe God wants them to have not enough something's not firing correctly if you think that if you think god wants you to be poor and remain poor something's not firing off right or you weren't taught or something's wrong and so i took it to the lord and the lord got on my case he said when you suffer it's because the people that love you suffer 
When your ministry suffers financially, it's because the people that love you are financially suffering. And I've talked to four or five people today and they're suffering. They've had to make some of the biggest payments that they've made in years. And it was astonishing to me when I, when I heard that. And the Lord said, get back at it. Get back at it and teach and preach and break the bondages off their finances. He said, I've given you the anointing to do that. Now do it. And it was, well, it was a strict, it was a strict word from the Lord to get at it. And so I got to share this with you in obedience to the Lord, that there is coming a flat line in the financial structure of America. And the people that serve God are the ones that are going to come out as winners. They're going to come out as blessed. It is all part of God's plan for the end time wealth transfer. There's going to be a flat line in the economy. And there's going to be a lot of people that are very, very upset because they lose a lot. But if you're a born again Christian, you can take it to the bank, baby. God is a better provider than the government ever thought of being. God is a better provider than your auntie, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your daughter, your son, whoever, whoever. When I was growing up, you know, the biggest thing the government ever did was start sending everybody a block of cheese. <laughs> and that's not very much. Now they give you a school. They give you everything you want. Chuck, I'm praying for you. I got that message. And in the name of Jesus, I command that breathing to calm down. I command that breathing. Peace be still on your breathing. In the name of Jesus, I speak healing right now. So uh, first of all, first and foremost, you need to understand that all material things in the earth belong to God. They belong to your heavenly father. Uh, I want to give you some substantiating scriptures on this because there are some preachers that are watching. They don't necessarily support me. They're not against me, but they just don't believe some of the stuff I say because their Bible college or their university didn't teach them that. And uh, there are some professors that I've taught a few things to, and they've been shocked. You know, uh, I've been in in some colleges, you know, I, I keep my transcripts up and I keep keep them at different. Right now they're at uh, Pentecostal Theological Seminary in Tennessee. And I do take classes from time to time because I believe learning is a lifetime experience. It's not just a one time deal. And uh, I think that if you set aside learning and you stop learning, you're in trouble. And so I've had professors where there were things theological in the Bible that they had no clue about. And they were shocked that I would point that out. Um, well, nevertheless, uh, if you're a preacher watching today, you need to know this. God's end time wealth transfer is upon us. And it's been prophesied since the 19, late 1940s, early 1950s, that it's coming and it is coming. And um, I looked at silver today, it's back down. I looked at gold today, it's back down. The stock market's been tanking and tanking. They're going to wake up one day and it'll probably be on a Monday morning and they're going to be shocked to see how many people lost what they lost. And it's going to flatline and it's going to it's going to be part of the judgments of the Lord. We learned today that Amos had five visions from the Lord and they were all judgments that God spoke to Amos to tell to the nation. And uh, it's not pleasant. You know, it's never pleasant to give a prophetic word to governments that are not walking with God, we're not walking straight with God. It's much easier to give, thus saith the Lord, when it's real happy and rosy and flowery. But it's really not fun when you have to give a word that's, you know, stern. And by the way, let me just say this today, that our huge audience, huge audience, I was shocked. I couldn't figure out why Thursday nights from midnight to 6 a.m., our audience on social media goes off the charts. I couldn't figure that out. And yesterday, I I said um, I said a certain I called a certain nation out, and uh, not in a bad way. I just called it out, and it triggered the algorithms with uh, YouTube, and uh, the cricket club. Okay, I don't know what cricket is. I think it's like soccer, but this particular nation has a cricket. And they, they hit me for copyright infringement when we didn't have music rolling. We had nothing playing except for me talking. And they hit me. Well, I know it's the devil. I know it's, I know it's demons working 
in those nations that don't want my voice to be heard. End of story, period. And so uh, I'm going to just keep on preaching. And uh, I don't know anything about the cricket club, but I know that when I say that particular nation and I call it, you know, it starts with a P and ends in an N. And when I say that word, man, it, it just fires off the algorithms and shuts me down in that nation. So I know it's the devil. I know that there, the devil has people that work in these places that don't want this message to go on. But I believe I'm reaching thousands and thousands of people in that particular nation. And uh, I, I was kind of discouraged about it. I thought, Lord, these are the people in this nation. I love them. I, I've never met them, but I love them. Honestly, I love them. I love all the people in every nation and every tribe. But there's an end time wealth transfer. The economies around the world are going to flatline. And there's an end time uh, wealth transfer that's coming to the body of Christ, where that means the wealth is going to shift out of the hands of the of the wicked and the world, and it's going to shift over into the hands of the righteous. And so first thing you must know right off the top is that all wealth belongs to God. All wealth belongs to God. It doesn't belong to man. It doesn't belong to a king. It doesn't belong to a queen. It doesn't belong to a government. It doesn't. Be, I mean, I, I sat through I, uh, I walked through the Queen's Jewels, you know, in London, and boy, is it impressive. I mean, it's all under glass, and it's all under lock, and they have infrared cameras, and they have guards guarding the building, and it's just crazy. The, the stone, I think, the one stone I saw was about this big, the size of a baseball that, uh, it, that, that London took from India. Uh, years ago, I think it, I think it was 52 or 62 carat diamond solitaire, and it's sitting under glass. And it's sitting under high security. Well, God owns that. God, the Bible says, the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. So everybody, everybody on the earth, God owns you. God owns me. God owns diamonds and silver and gold. And it's in God's hands. Well, when it gets in the hands of the wicked, it's in the wrong hands. It's supposed to shift out of the wicked hands and get over into your hands. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 10 and 11, it tells us that every beast of the forest is mine. Okay, so now not only does God own the wealth of the silver and the diamonds and the jewels and the gold, the rubies and all that, but now he owns the animals. Okay, every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle upon a thousand hills. So then the third verse is Haggai 2, 8. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Now, why am I saying this? Because you need to know that the transference is coming to you. You're going to have gold coins. You're going to have silver coins. You're going to have diamonds. People are going to give it to you. You're going to find it. You're, we, have a, we have a collection of diamonds that we found on the ground as we travel throughout the nation. The children will find it. My wife finds them. Um, for some reason, I find gold. She finds silver. I mean, she finds diamonds. And when we pick it up, we have a little red bag, and it's got a little drawstring on the top. And we've got a collection of five or six diamonds in that bag that we have found. And I know what happens. They fall out of people's rings, and the set doesn't hold it, and they just fall out. And, they're, and for some reason, the angels, the Lord, lets it sparkle and brings it to our attention. That's part of the wealth transference that's coming, okay? Uh, I have I have currency from around the world that was given to me. I think I have a uh, 100,000 dinar that was given to me from, from Iraq. And um, somebody gave it to me and uh, they blessed me. Well, I have that sitting there for whatever. I don't even know why I've got it. I, I guess I'm just holding on to it, but I could go on and on and on into the things that have been given to me that I've got in a box and I keep it in a box. And this is the wealth box. Okay. And uh, you should have a wealth box. Go get yourself a little briefcase. Mine's gold. Yours, yours should be some color. I don't know. Make it, make it fun. Don't make it some plain Jane black bag, but put some color to it. Make it fun. Let it stand out and say, that's my wealth box. And then expect God's going to give you wealth and it's going to transfer into your hands. 
you should have that coming to you. You're, you're a believer. You're a Christian. You're not a you're not a heathen. You're not like the world or the heathen. So um, the wealth of the wicked is being stacked up for you in the end time wealth transfer. The wealth of the wicked is being stacked up for you. You're going to have to lay hold of it in your faith. And I, I, I was at a point where I really didn't want to talk about this. And the Lord said, you're defrauding your partners if you don't talk about this. He said, you're, you are not doing your partners any good if you keep silent. He said, you've got to tell them to expect it, to look for it, to be ready for it. And I want you to start confessing every day the wealth of the wicked's coming to me. Okay? So now, praise God, Rosina. I want you to get this today. James chapter 5, verses 1, 2, and 3 is a key that you need to stand on. All right? Go to now, you rich men. Talking to rich men. Your riches are corrupted. Your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered. You can't trade gold and silver if there's a problem with it, if it's all eaten up and rusted. And the rest of them, the rest, R-U-S-T, of them shall be a witness against you. In other words, you have wealth, but it's it's not even nice wealth because you're under the curse, not under the blessing. And it's testifying against you. Well, when I have silver or gold, it's polished, it's shined, it's kept in protective covers. It's be beautiful. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to run upstairs because these children don't know how to be quiet. And they don't they have a hard time minding. So I'm going to take you upstairs to my bedroom where it's quiet. And uh, I'm in my house. I just didn't feel like coming to you from the studio tonight, battling sound. It frustrates me when I'm having to battle the sound. And uh, so let me just go to my chair in my room, find a spot here in my room where it's quiet. And uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm praying God will give me. Uh, I'm praying God will give me. Well, we need some lights in here. That's for sure. Just stay with me here. I'm going to turn on the lights in my bedroom. That way the babies can squall and ball and hoop and holler all they want to. <sighs> and you and I can talk and have a conversation. Because this is, if I don't tell you this, the Lord said, this would be detrimental to you. This would be detrimental to you if I don't tell you this, if I don't share this with you. This would be not good for you. And so... I want to make sure that you get all of this, what you're supposed to get from this. There's a great wealth transference coming, and it has to do with the mighty harvest, okay? And the harvest is for you. It's for your taking. And you gotta, you got to stand on the Word, and you got to believe the, what the Word says. Okay. So this is really where I like to come right on my bed here and pray and seek the Lord. And uh, often I bring, if it's, well, your prayer needs are on the altar bench down there, but a lot of times I come here and I pray right on my bed. That's just what the Psalmist David said he would do is he would stretch out on his bed and pray. I feel a strong anointing right here. And I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for enabling me to walk three miles yesterday. Thank you, Lord, for helping me to walk a mile and a half today. Thank you, Lord, for my doctor's appointment is tomorrow. And, Lord, you're going to give me favor with my doctor. My blood pressure is going to show down. My sugar level is going to be showing down. Let me just come down here on the floor. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> ignore the painting that that painting Angela and I did that painting when we first got married well her mother did part of it and then we thought we'd go crazy and add the rest and it's just kind of special to us it's nothing formal or organized but it's ours so and it's full of color all right so the wealth of the wicked is being stacked up for you and the end time wealth transfer harvest is coming. And the scripture for this is James 5, 1, 2, and 3. 
And it's the last part of that scripture. Am I lopsided? That scripture that I really want to focus on tonight. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Wicked men have heaped together treasures for the last days. They, they think they're heaping it together for boats and cars and houses. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the rich, the wealthy, they're heaping up their gold, their silver, and they're going to lose it. And it says it's coming to the hands of the righteous. I don't know how it's going to happen. In fact, maybe somebody can enlighten me and tell me, teach me. All I know is what God's word says, and I'm standing on it. All right. So the, the wicked is going to turn their wealth over to the children of God. And this is what I want to show you in the book of Job. Job, 20, this ought to be shouting news for you. If you're suffering financially, and many of you are. Many of you are. I prayed. I said, Lord, what's going on with my partners? And so I started exploring. I started calling some of you. I was so shocked. I, I said, Father, what is going on? And the Lord said, these partners are hurting financially because they've had setbacks. They've been kicked in the teeth. They've had a, a launch, an attack of, of evil spirits that have come against them. And so I just started travailing. Well, all day today. I've been praying and travailing and travailing and praying for many people. And if your name's on that altar bench or if you're a giver in the last month or two, you got prayed over. Let me tell you right now, you got prayed over. And I even prophesied over I, the word of the Lord came flowing out of my mouth. And I never typed as fast as I could type like I did today. And, 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 and people that didn't even ask for word, they got a word because they're a supporter of me and they're, they're, a, they're a partner with me. And, and if you want a word today and you're seeking God for a prophetic word, you get over there on Facebook and you message me. You message me. All right. Just make it simple. Just message me. And uh, let me give you the word of the Lord. I don't care what country you're in. If you're right here in my backyard in the Pacific Northwest or on the East Coast or around the world, God has a word for you. And if I get your name in my mouth, the rest is history. God will flow that prophetic word out and it'll be encouragement to you. And some of your witnesses, you've been in my services, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm coming to you from my bedroom today just because I didn't feel like going into the studios and messing around with the sound and pushing buttons. I just wanted to minister to you today. And uh, so that's what I'm doing. Maybe this will work good on the road when I travel. So here's the scripture, Job chapter 27. Can you hear me good? Job 27, verses 13, and then verses 16 and 17. This is the portion of a wicked man with God. Let's read that again. This is the portion of a wicked man. That means twisted. A man with God who's twisted. He's twisted in his thinking, but he's running with God. Though he heaps up silver as the dust and prepares raiment as clay, he may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. I like that. Hallelujah. Because I, the just shall live by faith. And those that live by faith can expect to lay hold on this word. And some of you are struggling, Patricia. Uh, I'm believing God, you're going to have your healing. You're going to have your miracle. And the devil is a liar. And in the, in the name of Jesus, we attack the lack, Patricia, from off of you. And the Lord would say, Patricia, I'm about to do a new thing. Watch and see, I will spring it forth immediately. And you will begin to see everything the devil stole from you. I will return back to you. For God says, I will bring the double to you, saith the Lord. So be not afraid of their faces and do not regard their voices. Do not regard their voices, saith the Lord, for I will fight your battle for you. For the battle is not yours, Patricia, but the battle is the Lord's. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way, and you won't even know how it's happening. But the arrow that flieth by noonday, it's not going to touch you, that there's a shield of faith that comes up over you, and you're totally protected in the name of Jesus. 
And we thank you for doing it, Lord. Oh, I felt that for, as a word from the Lord for you. Now, if you need a word, you need to communicate with me by messenger. You know, I don't like all this silent stuff. I like to talk to people. I like to minister to people. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I I, I was just in, so encouraged. I saw my friend Robert Tilton. And we talked the other, I think it was yesterday morning. And and uh, we chatted a little bit, went, went way back in memory lane. And um, thank God he's up and going again and giving the devil trouble and giving people heaven. And I love to see that. I don't like to see pastors, you know, beat down and and not doing what they're supposed to be doing, especially him. Uh, He's a father to many in faith. And so that was encouraged. But I want to talk to you. okay? I want to talk to you. So you message me. Send me a message right now and just say, Brother Woods, I need a word from heaven. I need a word from heaven. I don't know why anybody wouldn't. I mean, maybe you don't believe in the gifting, but I believe in the gifting. I've been walking with this gifting for a long time. And when the gifting is strong on me, I want to let it flow. I told somebody, pastor in Montana says, oh, we want you to come. I said, he said, what are you doing? I said, or how are you doing? Or what are you doing? Or something like that. I said, well, I'm, I'm cooped up in this house and I'm ready to go. I got an anointing on my hands. I can feel it. I want to lay hands on somebody and give them the word of the Lord. I'm not really happy until I'm praying over somebody. And so I got to pray over you and believe with you. Well, the Bible says the wicked man with God, he's going to prepare it, but the just shall put it on. And the innocent shall divide the silver. Are you innocent? Are you walking as a just man or a just woman? The Bible says you'll put it on. So faithfulness, your faithfulness in giving. Listen, if you're struggling financially, the worst thing you could do is stop giving. I'm talking about myself now. Uh, I had a financial setback a couple of weeks ago. And I said, man, I, I this is not good. I don't know what's going on here. And the Lord said, well, you know what to do. I said, yes, I do. And uh, I found three, two missionaries and a preacher. And I sowed just like that right into each one, one after another. And within 48 hours, $6,000 came into the ministry to take care of what was needed then. Of course, now we're needing $7,000 and and I'm, I'm sweating under the collar and I'm saying, God, how's it going to happen? Well, you got to sow again. You got to sow again. That's a word for somebody. You got to sow again. And so um, faithfulness in your tithes, in your offerings, it will turn the flow of wealth from the wicked into your life. You don't have to wait till the crash comes, okay? (laughs) Don't wait till the economic crash comes to start sowing and giving in your tithe. Don't wait all that time. You do it now. Do it today. And you're not just giving because I've got a need. You're sowing. You're standing on the word of God. You're saying, wait a minute, in the name of Jesus, I don't need to be sitting here in this poverty. I don't need to be sitting here in this mess and can't pay the bills and trying to figure out how to pay the water bill and how to get the kids clothes and how to get the school bill paid and how to get the insurance and the taxes. And the list goes on and on for many of you. You've told me, you've told me, and I understand. Well, what you do is you speak to it. You take dominion over your finances. Angela and I grabbed hands the other day. Passed a friend of ours out east. They said, you know, they were married 47 years. I didn't ask them. They told me, they said, We've lasted 47 years because marriages that hang out together are marriages that last. You know, don't get in the car and go your weary way and then she goes her way and you don't see each other till seven o'clock in the evening. So he says, yeah, but he works down at the factory. Well, pack a lunch and go drop in on him. Surprise, here I am. What are you doing here? Well, I'm his wife. That's what I'm doing here. Brought him a lunch. marriages that stay together a long time. And I'm talking about prosperity here. Prosperity is not just about money. Get that out of your head. If you can't have a marriage that's prosperous, you're not prospered. If your health is not prosperous, you're not prospered. I walked today, yesterday, three miles. I walked today a mile and a half. Why? Because I'm going to prosper in my body. I'm not going to have sickness and disease. That's not part of prosperity. And so get it out of your head that silver and gold and money and riches are all prosperity and that's it. No, you're healing and you're divine. I'm going to the doctor tomorrow. I'm going to receive a good report. 
In fact, I'm believing God, I'm coming off of some of the medications they put me on four or five years ago for the heart issue. And I'm going to believe God, my blood pressure drops and they're going to be shocked. I'm going to believe they're going to look at my sugar drops. They're going to go, whoa, what is going on with you? And I'm going to say, look at God. Ha <laughs> ha, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. That's what I'm believing for is a good report. All right, so let me give you this quickly. And I'm coming to you from my bedroom because I didn't feel like going to my studio today. I just felt like coming on being with you one-on-one -on -one today. God promises the wealth of the wicked to his children. And by the way, I want you to stay with me for this whole program. The world we live in today is a three-minute world. YouTube told me that. That's how I know about it. Facebook told me about that. They, they show you this is how many people stayed with you for three minutes. Wow. If you get somebody to stay with you for three minutes, you're an amazing YouTuber. You're an amazing Facebooker. Well, a lot of my people, they stay with me two hours. Uh, not everybody does, but a lot of them do because they want to hear. They want to glean from the knowledge of the Word of God. And uh, so I want to encourage those of you that are joining me, stay with me. Don't be a three-minute person like the rest of the world. Stay with me. God promises the wealth of the wicked to his children. And Lord, I just repent for listening to the negative naysayers and the leaders of the religious people of this world today that tried to talk me out of not being a prosperity preacher. Oh, don't talk prosperity so much. You're making people angry. Well, the people that get angry about prosperity are the people that need prosperity the most. The people that get angry about a healing preacher is the people that need healing the most. And the preacher, the people that get mad because you talk about you need a savior from your sins are the people that need redemption the most. And so, Lord, just forgive me for just listening to those empty-headed people. Lord, we love them. We, we bless them. We ask you to help them. But, Lord, I don't even want them around me anymore. I want godly people who want prosperity, who want healing, who want health, who want a godly marriage, who want to live on the bright side of life and on the blessed side of life. Amen. Somebody shout a good amen. I feel God on that tonight. Well, Proverbs 13, 22 backs up what I'm saying. God promises the wealth of the wicked to his children. So he says, I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe the Bible. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. That's Proverbs 13, 22. You should mark it in your Bible. You should put it on a sticky note and put it on your mirror in your car. And you should every day around your day, you should confess that out loud. I'm not going broke. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for me. I'm the just. I'm walking. I'm justified by the blood of the lamb. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And then we see Ecclesiastes 2.26. To the sinner, he, God, giveth travail. Ah, the sinner is always travail. Oh, that's the sinner life. I've been to some services where a lot of people are travailing and they they don't they should know that that belongs to the to the to the sinner not to the believer okay travail belongs to the sinner not to the believer where is that in Ecclesiastes 226 and their job is to gather and to heap up that they may give to him that is good before God that's Ecclesiastes 226 now father i just lift up my dear precious partners oh god they're, they're struggling with sickness in their body. And Lord, I talked to them today. I had a, I had a message for them. And Lord, I pray that, that the healing power of the Lord Jesus goes through their body. I know it may sound corny, but maybe just put your hand on my hand. Because I've been feeling the anointing all day today. And Lord, I speak healing right now. Healing to your body. And I rebuke and resist every infirmity and every sickness. I command you to get out of that body right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So Ecclesiastes 2.26 is so powerful. To the sinner, God giveth travail. To gather, to heap up. Why? That he may turn around and give it to him who is good with God. Are you good with God? If you're good with God, and I believe many of you are, your candidate for the wealth transference to come out of the hands of the sinner into your hands. I had to get this to you. I got this in the studio three days ago and the audio was so bad it didn't even get to you. And I said, forget it, forget it. I'm just going to take my little iPhone. I'm going to find a little place in my house and it'll be just you and me because I got to get this to you. Enough suffering. Enough suffering in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, the wealth of the wicked is added to those who put God's kingdom first. 
Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. The Bible says all is a lot, okay? All is a lot. The things Jesus adds are the things the wicked seek out. The things that Jesus adds are the very things that the wicked seeking are seeking out. What's the wicked seeking out? Somebody said, aren't you mad that such and such preacher drives a Bentley? I said, no, I wish he had too. Let me just say something to you that my wife and I both agree on this. This is very powerful and probably perhaps controversial in some people's minds. But it, at this point, I just really don't care. Maybe I don't care is the wrong words. I'm not going to be influenced or moved by people's wicked opinions. My children are not here. They're downstairs and they're all over the house. And I'm in the privacy of my bedroom. Who would you like your children to look up to and want to be? Tupac, the billionaire who has all the wealth of the world. The rappers, the ones running around in crime and gangster life and, and adultery and drugs. Or a, or a major preacher who's so blessed that the young people look up and they go, oh, I would like to be a preacher. Now, for years, in America especially, parents have said, oh, no, son, oh, no, daughter, don't go to Bible college, don't become a preacher. You'll be poor all your life. And that sack of garbage has been twisted up and shoved down young people's minds and throats all their life to where they really believed it. And we got preachers today that are living in poverty, not because they have to, but because that's what they were told they had to. It is my understanding that Brother Copeland has an oil field and natural gas on his property that services a large region and that he has given to his ministry at the maximum capacity that the legal law allows. It is my understanding there's a couple other preachers, and I shouldn't have mentioned his name. I should just keep quiet because that's their business. But it is my understanding that there are ministers that have a lot of wealth that didn't come from the ministry, came from real estate, came from land, came from wealth that came up out of the ground. And yet you got people shooting off their mouth that don't know what they're talking about. I'm going to tell you right now, I've got some little children and I would much prefer that they look up to a Kenneth Copeland and want to be like him instead of a Tupac or a Snoop Dogg or some crazy sinner, wicked man out of their mind. But that's not the way the church rolls, baby. That's not the way the church rolls. They've been twisted in their mind and they do not understand this message that I'm talking about right here. My notes. The wealth of the wicked is always added to those who put God's kingdom first. If you ask my children, what do they want to be? They're going to be saying, I want to be like my daddy. Well, why? Well, he's prosperous.
<clears throat> All right, we're back. Praise the Lord. We lost battery. And that's why I do my messages in the studio, I guess, because we don't ever lose battery. I'm coming to you. I'm shocked that it just brought it back up. I'm coming to you live from, uh, and, and all of you are staying with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. I'm coming to you from my bedroom, okay, where there's peace and quiet. I don't have to mess with the audio. I get a clear signal here, and you can hear me loud and clear, and I don't have to strip. You know, doing a program by myself, one day I'll have cameraman, I'll have audio man, I'll have a switcher. I'm doing a full production by myself and ministering in the gifts of the spirit. And it's quite, uh, quite the joke actually. Um, but anyways, we're doing it and the Lord's helping me and we're, we're okay. All right. Let me give you a warning. Let me give you a warning and thank God for many of you staying on with me here. The wealth of the righteous and we're plugged into power. So praise God for that. The wealth of the righteous goes to the wicked when the righteous don't use it properly. When they withhold, I taught, taught the people over 200 past, pastors in Africa in the year 2000, I think it was 2001. The number one reason people suffer poverty is withholding. Anytime you suffer financially, get to sowing. Find places to sow that are good, and, and you will activate faith. You'll activate the angels. You will see things open back up. And I just did it the other day, and now I'm seeing here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. It's living the life of seed time and harvest, and the wealth of the righteous goes to the wicked. It reverses backwards when the righteous do not use it properly. If you don't use it, it'll go to the wicked. And you don't want it going to the wicked. You want it staying in the righteous hands. And somebody said, where do you find this, Brother Woods? Well, Ezekiel 7. Look it up. Ezekiel 7, verse 20 and 21. And by the way, I was reading the other day, and the Lord said, the sons of the prophets said, this place is too small. And uh, even though I have a big house, of course, we have five children. We're running the studio out of, this, out, of the, um, out of my office, my secret place. And I'm running my print center out of the garage it's too small. I can't hardly operate here. It's that small. And I need a bigger place. I mean, I don't need the sons of the prophets to tell me uh, that I need to do. <laughs> but I read that. I said, okay, Father, if that's what you're saying, we're going to start putting our faith towards it. Ezekiel 7, verse 20 and 21, out of the Living Bible, it says, I gave you gold to use in the decoration of the temple. That's what God said to the people. You're supposed to go around, decorate the temple and deck it out and make it look really nice, better than your home. But you used it instead to make idols. To make idols. Uh, somebody said, wow, that's pretty bad, bad news when you find out somebody used it to make idols. <laughs> what God gave you for the temple and you're using it for idols, that's a pretty serious judgment, you know. Yes, they were making idols. That gold that God gave to them was supposed to be going for the temple. Instead, they made idols out of it. That's not good. God says in Ezekiel 7, verse 21, I will give it, your wealth, to the wicked men as booty. B-O-O-T-Y. -E That's the living Bible. They're going to have all this wealth and it's going to come from the, from the righteous to the wicked because you did not use it right. You squandered it. And you were not faithful. I gave you gold to build the house of God. Instead, you built idols with it. I wonder how many people are guilty of that today. God blesses them. They get a bonus. They get an increase. And instead, they go buy something silly at the mall. And they don't know that it's an idol, but they're idolizing it. If it wows you all the time, your, your idolatry can be in many forms. This doesn't score points with people, but it's the right word. And so you got to remember that proper giving adds wealth. Improper giving subtracts wealth. And the, the Lord said to teach you this and give you this a few days ago. And I didn't want to get, because every time I get it, somebody gets in a debate, somebody gets mad, somebody gets angry. But the Lord said, you're doing the people an injustice and a disservice. He said, they're suffering. They're, they're suffering financially and they need a word. They need something that's going to... to to change something in there. 
The wealth of the wicked is headed for you. I declare it in the name of Jesus. I prophesy it over you in the name of the Lord. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for you, the righteous, in Jesus' name. Now, three more things I want to give you. Then I'm going to pray for you. And let me remind you, if you need a word, send me a message. I would to God. Some days I sit here and say, God, this gifting is big in me. It's boiling over. And yet somebody must need a word. So I got on Messenger. And I started looking at all my partners and my friends, not all of them, but as many as I could. There's over, what, 6,000. And as one after another, I'd spring up the name and then I would seek the Lord. And then here comes the word of the Lord. Well, if you didn't get a word from heaven, you need to. You need to write me today. You need to get on messenger and you need to say, Brother Woods, I need a word from heaven. So, by the way, while I'm here, you see this beautiful oak bed? Look at this. This was made for Angela and I, solid oak sleigh bed. When we got married, what was it, 23, 24 years ago? And we've had it all these years and it's lasted so long. What a wedding gift, huh? From a man who makes oak furniture. And I just thought I'd show that while I'm here because everything in my house was given to me and blessed by God. And, um, I'll just show you. I don't mean to give you a tour of my bedroom here, but I'll just show you. This dresser right here is from uh, Thailand. That's my chest of drawers there, and it's got intricate detail. And that was blessed to me. Boy, it was hard getting up here in the, in the stairway, but it's a beautiful piece of woodwork that I really, really enjoy. And I say, thank you, Lord, for all his blessing. This is what I'm talking about today. The wealth of the wicked taken out of the hands of the wicked and put it in your hands. The blessed of the Lord, the righteous, the one who's doing right. Yes, there's a, a, a inflation. We got inflation busters, as my preacher friend says. Yes, there's an economy failure and crash coming, but that's not going to move us. Did you see the three second? Did you see the three minute people that came and went? They were scrolling, scrolling, say, seen my dresser, and they stopped to look. What has he got there? And then they kept on going. Sometimes I wonder if I really got friends or if I just got nosy people. What's he doing next? <laughs> I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm not going to let it bother me. God's end time wealth transfer. Abraham received the wealth of the wicked. Yes, he did. Genesis 13, go read the whole chapter, but especially the first two verses. Abram went up out of Egypt, and Abram was very rich in three things, the Bible says. Cattle, silver, and gold. Remember I said at the very beginning, the silver and the gold and the beast of the field, they all belong to God. So if they belong to God, then you need to be stewards of it. If you're out in the country, you need to believe God to give you a piece of property, a piece of land. And go find yourself two cows, a male and a female, and set them out there and get them their shots and let them see the vet and, and, and say, go have fun and multiply. Multiply in the name of Jesus. I prayed over man's cows in Texas, and they started having babies two and threes when they normally had ones, singles, single babies. Now after we anointed his cows and prayed over them, they're having twos and threes. Praise God. That's multiplication. And in the hands of the of the righteous, they're supposed to be multiplying and blessed and prosperous. But in the hands of the wicked, it'll be taken away from the righteous and given to the one who's a good steward. It's all about stewardship, beloved. Joseph received the wealth of the wicked. So Abraham received the wealth of the wicked. Joseph received the wealth of the wicked. Genesis 47, verse 14. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. And in the land of Canaan, think about it. Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan. Some of you got hidden money. Did you know that? You got hidden money? That's right. You got hidden money. You need to be looking it up on the Secretary of State, on, on his website, whatever state you're in, SOS, secretaryofstate.com. Look up your name, do a search. You're going to find out there's lots of people with that name that's got money sitting around. Insurance policies, deposit from your rent place that you rented from 10, 15 years ago and you forgot about it. It's there. They're holding on to it. Billions of dollars they're holding on to. 
And God's displeased when he sees that you left a hundred dollar deposit back on an apartment 15, 20 years ago, and now it's sitting with the state and they're collecting interest off of your money. That's not pleasing to God. Get that hundred dollars and sew it or spend it or do something with it. Let it collect interest or, or go buy, uh, t t you know, a hundred dollars to buy you two, four, six, eight, five, five spots of silver. Go find that hidden money and go do something with it. God's watching to see what you're going to do with it. And you're a good steward. If you're a good steward, you'll find what's in your name and go get it and do what's right with it. And then the third thing, Israel received the wealth of the wicked. So Abraham received the wealth of the wicked. Joseph received the wealth of the wicked. And now Israel received the wealth of the wicked. Second Chronicles 20, 25. And this is the last, uh, second to the last verse. And then I'll let you go tonight. But I know some of you are getting this and I know some of you appreciate this. And some of you haven't peered in to see me for a while. You keep seeing the same backdrop, same program. You think it's a rerun. Stay with me. Stay with me, okay? I, I'm, I got so much to put into you and impart into you, but I can't do it when you're, you're constantly leaving. When Israel came to take away the spoil, the Bible says they found among them in abundance both riches, precious jewels, which they'd stripped off for themselves, more than they could even carry away. This is 2 Chronicles 20, 25. They stripped off of themselves more than they could carry away. And there were so much that there were three days of gathering the spoil. Listen, beloved, I have a saying in my life that I say all the time. Stop focusing on the war. Look at the spoils of war. Stop looking in at the battle and look at the spoils of the battle. God's got spoils surrounding your battle. The reason you're battling is because there's something to battle. There's something worth battling over. There's something the devil's trying to rob from you or steal or kill from you. Stand up. T take it back. Say, it's mine. I'm taking this back in the name of Jesus because I'm a good steward. That's why I'm taking it back. She said, oh, you're greedy or you're lustful. No, I'm a good steward. And God said, if I'm not a good steward in the book of Luke, he says he'll take it out of my hands and he'll put it in the hands of somebody that is a good steward. And so this is very important that you hear this because there is a coming economic collapse. There is trouble in the world today. And uh, it's coming down like a freight train going downhill, brother. And you're going to know about it, but you're going to be ready for it because you are a good steward and you had your seed in the ground. You had your seed in the ground. Oh, glory to God. I feel this right now. I feel this right now. Jesus. God transferred the wealth of the wicked to them, and he'll transfer it to you. He transferred it to them, and I believe he'll transfer it to you. You believe it, don't you? Acts 10, 34. Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. God's not going to look at this person and say, well, you know, they deserve it, and this person doesn't deserve it. Everything is a test. In fact, I tell my, my, my children, ask me a couple of nights ago, they said, now, Dad, why did you do it that way? I said, because the old test and the young trust, and I'm no longer young, okay? When you're young, you just trust everybody. When you're older, you ask questions, you put people to the test, you, you find out why they're doing things. The older, tr uh, the older test, the younger trust. And that's part of stewardship right there. But God's not a respecter of persons. Now, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There are five people the Lord says that you're going to open up a new season, two days. In two days, summer will be gone. And the Lord said, a new season is coming to you where you're going to begin to see the, the, the first fruits is going to come of this new season of wealth. And I see five people sowing $147. $147. There's five of you. Thank you, Father, for that man. Thank you, Father, for those three women. Thank you, Lord. There's another young man. There's somebody who's single. There's somebody who's married. There's somebody that has a job, and there's somebody that does not have a job. You're living off of government support. And the Lord is saying right now that $147 that you saved up for something, the Lord said, if you'll prove me now and sow it, into this ministry, 
God's going to begin to release the little trickle down blessing and prosperity upon you. And then he's going to sit back and he's, oh, I saw an angel right in front of me. It startled me. There's an angel sitting right here. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I opened my eyes and thought somebody was sitting there. It's an angel. But $147 seed, God said, is going to unlock the door. And then it's not over. Once you sow the $147 seed, the Lord said, he's, once he brings you the first trickle of prosperity, he's going to watch to see if you're a good steward with what he gives you. Don't go out and spend it all at one place. Look for places to, to, to buy. Look for something. You know, I bought a piece of property one time for $150. I did a piece of land and, uh, you know, later on turned around and sold it for $30,000. Well, somebody said, how'd you get that? I heard God. I heard God. And then I had to become a good steward. So we said, what'd you do with it? I gave it all away. I sold it. I sold every bit of it. I've sold, I think eight or nine cars. People give me automobiles. And as soon as I give away one, here comes somebody else with a title and a key. And I was a car given man for three years. And I love it. It's called stewardship. When God sees you make up your mind to sow into other people's lives, he'll use you in that ministry. But if you sit back and say, well, I don't know about that given stuff. I don't know about that prosperity preacher and all he wants is my money. You have mismanaged your attitude. You have mismanaged your faith. But if you understand God raises up financial deliverers, that God has called me to deliver you and set you free physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. It's the whole man prosperity, the whole woman prosperity. I got to go. I'm out of time, but I'm looking for your love gift, $147 seed standing on Genesis 47, that Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt. You're going to gather up all the money that was found. You're going to do it and you're going to see God do it. Go to Cash App, dollar sign Sewing Woods, sew $147. Go to monthlypartners.com, sew $147 seed and watch God turn around your famine, your crisis, and you're going to see God bring a miracle to your, to your life, bring abundance to you in Jesus' name. Father, touch my brother, touch my sister. Loose them into the blessing and into the harvest of wealth. In Jesus' name, not for their lust, not for their greed, but that they may be a good steward of what you bring to them. And may there be many testimonies, I pray, in Jesus' name. I love you. God loves you. And we'll talk to you again real 